What's going on summoners? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. I'm Genghis and today I'm talking about 5 sleeper OP picks and builds that you should be abusing for some free LP. You already know the popular OP picks and builds since they're all over social media, even our own YouTube channel, but in this video we're looking at some of the lesser known builds and picks today. So hit that sub button and let's get right into it. The first one we'll take a look at today is Mordekaiser in the mid lane. In terms of the build and general gameplay, this isn't really anything different than Mordekaiser top lane. But what makes Mordekaiser in the mid so OP is just how hard he counters all the meta champs that you play against in the role. Right off the bat, Mordekaiser, being a juggernaut, is a very beefy boy. This makes it pretty hard, if not impossible, for the melee assassins that dominate this role to go in and burst him down, which is what they typically do against any other squishier champs. If they do try to go in, you end up mitigating a good amount of the damage with the shield, and then you dish out a lot more damage than they can deal to you. And since going in for trades is the only way that those champions can really play the laning phase, you end up with what is essentially a free early game. And as the game goes on, you just get stronger and stronger, with them being unable to ever touch you, and then in team fights, you can take them away into the death realm and then prevent them from even doing anything against the rest of your team. But that's all the hypotheticals, so first let's take a look at the actual build that you're going for. For runes, you want Conqueror, Triumph, Tenacity, or Alacrity if the enemy team has very little CC, Coupe de Gras, Conditioning, and Overgrowth, with the rune stats being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor or Magic Resist. For your items, you want to start with a door and shield, then build into your Riftmaker first. For boots, you'll either want plated steel caps or merc treads, and once those are done, you'll grab a Nashor's Tooth and a Zonia's Hourglass. After that, things are a bit more flexible. Generally speaking, Demonic Embrace is a good item since it gives you more durability while also adding to your damage output. But to top things off, Thornmail is also a pretty good item, as it allows you to 1v1 even the strongest of duelists if you end up having to ult them out of fights. But of course, other solid choices for Mordekaiser are Randuid's Omen, Spirit Visage, or just the good old Void Staff for even more damage. But as we all know, part of what makes Sleeper OP picks so successful is the fact that nobody really plays them. Objectively speaking, they may not be better than or even as good as some of the more popular picks, but when your opponents don't know how to play against them, you get that extra edge in the fight. But that alone isn't going to be enough to win you all of your solo queue games. You also, of course, need the skills to get those leads and the know-how to use those leads to win games, so that's where we come in. If you head over to ProGuides.com, you can chat with any of our top tier coaches 24 seven, where they can either VOD review your own gameplay or even hop into normal game with you and teach you on the go. It's the end of the ranked season. So if you're trying to grind out those last bits of LP, you gotta go check it out right now. We got a link in the description down below, so click on it if you're interested, but otherwise let's get back to the video. The next build we're looking at is Lethality as real. Divine Sunderer was an incredibly broken item when it got that huge buff to its Spellblade passive, but something that a lot of people seem to have missed is that it was nerfed for ranged champions, bringing it down from 12% to 9% of your opponent's max HP. Now, that isn't to say it's bad on Ezreal now, it's still a pretty strong item, and the mythic passive giving you a split pen is really nice too, since Ezreal does a good amount of both physical and magic damage. And also the percent HP damage is still good against tankier enemy teams. But what I'm trying to say is it isn't something you should be going for every single game, no matter what. If the enemy team is really squishy, you should actually be itemizing to blow up those squishy targets fast. The lethality build makes your Q hit so much harder against said targets and ends up giving you a lot more ability haste too. So you'll be spamming the Qs more often and then be able to use your arcane ship to kite and go in as needed. But let's take a look at the build. For runes, things will be pretty standard. You still take Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Bloodline, Coupe de Grave, Mana Flow Band, and Transcendence, with the stat runes being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. But for your items, you'll start off with the Doran's Blade, and then on an early recall, pick up Tier of the Goddess, still like usual, so you can start stacking up that mana fast. Your first full item will still be Essence Reaver, followed by Lucidity Boots and Mana Mune. But with that core done, now you go for your mythic item, Dusk Blade of Drakthar. After that, your next two items in most games will be Sorelda's Grudge and Yomu's Ghostblade. But if you think you need some more defensive power to survive assassin one-shot attempts, you can still go for Frozen Heart or even Azonia's over that Ghostblade. Next up, we got everybody's favorite rolling jungler, Ramus. Now, this isn't any crazy off-meta roll or build, but Ramus as a champion is just generally undervalued at the moment. Sitting at a pretty 52% win rate in the upper elos on 11.20, he's already a good champ with such an easy-to-execute kit. And with Gore Drinker and Conqueror getting nerfed on this patch, he's going to be even better. Ramus works super well in solo queue for the same reason that champion like Skarner does. He can just zoom into a fight and make a free pick with his point and click taunt. Early game, that might mean getting an easy kill and a gank, but this becomes really useful in the mid and late game stages. At that point, you may be securing a free dragon or baron for your time, or maybe even the entire game if you killed a really valuable target. 
Another really appealing thing about Rammus is that he's kryptonite for any auto attack based champs, basically acting like an assassin against them in fights. You're not just taunting them so that they can't kill your team, you're forcing them to kill themselves against you. This is obviously going to be good against AD carries, but my favorite time to pick a Rammus is when the enemy team has a Yasuo on their team. You can make him completely useless for the entire game. But anyway, with that said, let's look at the build. For runes, you want Aftershock, Font of Life, Conditioning, Overgrowth or Unflinching, Triumph and Alacrity, with the stat runes being Attack Speed and Double Armor. For items, you'll start off with a Hailblade, then build into Turbo Chem Tank, Plated Steel Caps and Thorn Mail. Once that's done, you can outplay every AD champion in sight. But after that core is finished, you'll usually go for Dead Man's Plate, Abyssal Mask, and then top things off with a situational item. Usually those being Randwin's Omen, Frozen Heart, or Gargoyle's Stone Plate. But it is important to note that this is mostly against AD heavy builds. You might need to build more magic resist if there's a lot of mages. Now the next champion that we have is Crit Viego. Statistically speaking, Viego is not doing too hot, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's always bad. Viego is still one of the most OP champs in the game, but he has a ridiculously high skill ceiling. Hell, even the skill floor is high on this champ. Viego's own kit is easy, but being able to use it usefully in teamfights, you need to know how to use every champion that you take over with your passive at least at a decent level. And the next thing is that you also have to know how to effectively build Viego. Yes, the Bruiser build with Divine Sunderer at the core is a solid and efficient build, but sometimes efficiency isn't enough. If you're playing a hard carry, you want to do as much damage as possible, especially when you're the only fed member on your team. Let's say that you're playing against a fed carry, someone like Vayne or Jinx. If you do the Bruiser build, they can just face tank your damage and burn you down before you ever get the reset. But going the crit build allows you to assassinate your targets quickly and take over their champs so that you can continue to mow over the enemy team. So let's take a look at the build. For runes, you want Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, or Tenacity, Coupe de Gras, Sudden Impact, and Ravenous Hunter, with the stat runes being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. For your items, you'll start off with Ember Knife and then build into Kraken Slayer, Steel Caps or Merc Dreads, and Blade of the Rune King. After that, your item choices can vary depending on the game's needs, but if you want to go full carry, you grab Collector, Infinity Edge, and Lord Dominic's Regards to be a true glass cannon. But if you want to be a bit safer, you can still fit Steric Gage, Death Stance, and either Wits End or Guardian Angel instead. Like I said, Viego's stats aren't that great, but when he's played well, he is an incredibly broken champion capable of straight up 1v9ing in a lot of games. So that brings us to today's question of the day. What's another champion that has a low win rate, but feels impossible to beat when played by a good player? Now, obviously I'm biased because I've been playing this one a lot myself, but even though Pantheon supports only rocking around a 48% win rate, when there's a good player piloting it, it just feels so busted having a Pantheon support constantly ulting into mid and top lane. Let me know your answers in the comments down below. Now finishing off our list, we have an OP bot lane in Swain and Trundle. Since this is a specific bot lane duo, you'll probably want to try it with a reliable duo partner, not just some random and solo queue. But we've already talked many times about how OP Swain is as a bot lane carry in plenty of other meta videos, but when paired with Trundle specifically, kind of disgusting how oppressive he becomes. Usually, you either have to land your E on one of your opponents or wait for your support to land something to be able to go in for a trade. If your opponents hang back too far, you won't really be able to do this. In most lanes, your opponent conceding the lane is nice since it means free farm, but as Swain, you want as many passive stacks as you can get. Well, when paired with Trundle, you have a guaranteed way to proc your passive consistently. Trundle's pillar displaces units on top of it, and while this may only be a teeny tiny bit of CC, it is enough to proc Swain's passive. That alone would be strong, but what's really OP is it is that you can pull your opponent through the pillar, causing them to be trapped on the wrong side of it. This sets you up for a really easy W, so you'll be getting two souls every time. And that's also on top of the fact that you're just getting easy all-ins when you're ready for it. Against an immobile AD carry or a squishy enchanter support, this is basically guaranteed kills. No matter how good somebody's mechanics are, Drundle Pillar isn't really the type of ability that you can dodge or outplay. It's either sit under tower, out of XP range, or move up and then risk dying. So let's take a look at the build. For Swain, the runes are Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Tenacity, Last Stand, Cheap Shot, and Ultimate Hunter, with the stat runes being Double Adaptive Force and Armor. For Swain's items, you'll want to start with the Doran's Ring to build into Leandria's, Sork Shoes, and Zonia's Hourglass. After that, get Demonic Embrace, Rabadon's, and Avoid Staff. I do want to point out the D-Ring start here. On patch 11.20, Spell Thief's Edge had a bug that caused it to give no diminishing gold when you farm with it, no matter how much CS you get. So technically, that's a better item than Doran's Ring if that bug persists through 11.21. But a rioter has stated that it's something they're looking into, so we're recommending D-Ring for now. 
But with that said, let's take a look at the support setup. For Trundle's runes, you want Guardian, Font of Life, Second Wind, Unflinching, Biscuit Delivery, and Approach Velocity, with the Zat runes being Haste, Armor, and Magic Resist or HP. For items, you'll start with a Steel Shoulder Guard, Rush Lucidity Boots, and then go for Locket of the Iron Solari. Imperial Mandate does give some hard-hitting Bursi trades early, but it's not really worth a trade-off. After Locket's done, you'll get a Knight's Vow, then Wardstone, and if the game goes long enough, you can finish off with an Anathema's Chains. But that'll wrap up our video for Sleeper OP picks that you're missing out on in patch 11.21. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to sub so you never miss out on our meta guides and like the video because it helps us keep making content just like this. Don't forget to answer our question of the day in the comments below or join our community discord through the link in the description below. But most importantly, best of luck on the rift, everybody. Stay hydrated. and I'll see you in the next one.